Uh, now we must deal with stylistic classification of the vocabulary. All functional styles can be classified into two large groups, formal and informal. A special branch of linguistic science, lexicology, has done much to classify vocabulary. For our purpose, first, linguistic stylistics, for lingual stylistics, a special type of classification, stylistic classification, is more important, of course. Um, in different situations, people choose different kinds of words to express their thoughts and ideas. The modes of speech, the choice of formal or informal words, is determined by the social context. The choice of the right word, whether formal or informal, depends on its stylistic characteristics. To be more precise, depends on the functional style it represents. The same is true of social behavior, uh, so we shall hardly turn up at a formal reception or in parliament wearing shorts or a t-shirt. Uh, besides formal and informal words, there remains one more important layer of vocabulary, uh, neutral words. The stylistic neutrality makes it possible to use them in all kinds of situations, both formal and informal, in verbal or written communication. We can remember from our course in lexicology that basic vocabulary words can be recognized not only by their stylistic neutrality, but also by entire lack of other connotations. Their meanings are usually broad and general. They convey the concept without supplying any additional information. For example, the word look is neutral, but its synonyms are to stare, to glare, to gaze, to peep, to peer, all possess additional information, and they describe different manner of looking. The basic vocabulary and stylistically marked strata of the vocabulary do not exist independently, but are closely interrelated. Most stylistically marked works or words have the neutral counterparts in the basic vocabulary. Uh, for example, to begin belongs to basic vocabulary. To start, to get started, to informal style. Uh, to commence, to formal style. To end is neutral. To finish, to be through, uh, be over, to informal style. To terminate, formal. So this list may be too long, and it is not the concern of uh, today's uh, lecture. Uh, informal vocabulary is usually employed in one's immediate circle, family, relatives, or friends. One uses informal words when at home and when feeling at home. As for formal style, it is usually restricted to formal situations. Uh, usually formal style embraces words associated with professional communication and so-called learned words. So-called uh, uh, because uh, this term lacks in precision. So we can use out of date, scholarly, erudite. Uh, learned words may also be called literary, but they lack precision even more than the term learned. Um, the latter includes so-called Officialese, the words of uh, bureaucratic language. Uh, Partridge, in his dictionary, Usage and Abusage, gives a list of officialies uh, which he thinks should be avoided in speech and in print. Um, for example, um, assist and help, endeavor, try, sufficient, enough, attired, dressed, inquire, ask. Uh, according to Partridge, uh, when there is possibility of uh, using uh, help instead of assist, we should always use help, uh, um, try uh, instead of endeavor, enough instead of sufficient, uh, dressed instead of uh, attired, ask instead of uh, inquire. Uh, in the same dictionary, an official letter uh, from a government department is quoted, uh, which may serve as a typical example of officialies. You're also right to acquire the work in question by purchase through the ordinary trade channels. So if we translate it into plain English, uh, it will sound like that. Uh, we advise you to buy this book in a shop. 
Uh, now let us deal with another example. Uh, one full week after the funeral, the immediate family of millionaire Charles Hudson was gathered in a law office to hear the reading of the deceased's will. Mrs. Hudson's wife, 30 years his junior, was prepared for a bitter skirmish with his former wife and her son. The lawyer, Don Rollins, anticipated a turbulent session because he was the only one who was cognizant of the contents of the revised will that Hudson had ordered drawn up six months prior to his death. Now, the current Mrs. Hudson, attired in her smart uh, widow's wits, expected that she would receive the lion's share of the estate. The former Mrs. Hudson felt she was entitled to most of the estate since she was uh, practically indigent at the present time, despite her substantial alimony payments. Uh, now, pay attention to the usage of the words immediate family, anticipated, former, she was entitled, substantial alimony payments, turbulent session, was cognizant, etc. Uh, the above extract may serve as an example of officialis. Um, learned words are mainly associated with the printed page, and therefore we may think that they cannot be used in everyday speech. But in fact, this is an erroneous attitude, because any educated person is sure to use many learned words not only in his formal letters, legal documents, or scientific articles, and professional communication, for instance, during lectures, but also in his everyday speech. Educated people, both in fiction and in real life, use learned words quite naturally. Uh, but of course, excessive use of learned elements, uh, both in prose and in real life, might sound ridiculous. Utterances overloaded with pompous words usually tend to be pretentious and the uh, users claim that they are far too refined to use neutral vocabulary. Uh, but instead of refinement and elegance, they achieve the exact opposite. Uh, they look uh, absurd and ridiculous. Though, if we did not know some learned words, it would be impossible to deal with official documents or even read fiction. Moreover, you would not be able to listen to uh, lectures of stylistics which are delivered uh, in English. Uh, though all the learned words should be chosen in moderation, and we have already mentioned that the excessive use of learned words may lead to absurdities.